National Early Warning Score. It was developed by the Royal College of Physicians. Okay, so it advocates a system to standardize the assessment and response to acute illness. It also improves detection and response to clinical deterioration in adult patients. Um, the, the key element of patient safety and improving patient outcomes. So just to give you a background about the news. So it was launched back in 2012 and it was developed because there were national inquiries of deaths in the hospital. The Royal College of Physicians, they developed this tool because they felt that there, there was a need to develop early detection to improve patient outcome. So they, they're thinking of some sort of tool or an early warning system that can be used across the NHS. So that's why we use the word national. Okay, It's national. That means it's standardized. So wherever you go, everyone knows what news is. The news is very simple. It's um based on the six physiological parameters. Of course, your it's based from the pulse, from the blood pressure, what else? Respiratory rate, your oxygen saturation, your temperature, and of course your consciousness level. And do we agree that if you're ill, if someone is ill or someone is um deteriorating, these vital signs change or it fluctuates. So this will be the basis of the news. Those parameters, we give them score. And of course, it will tell us the severity of the illness, okay? And the new score will be the basis of triaging the response to patient. That's why at the back of your news chart, if you've seen it, it, we have the clinical response, the table which shows what actions you will be performing based on the score. The higher the score, it implies deterioration. The lowest possible score for the news is zero. We'll discuss it a bit more later, okay? In the OSCE, you will be using the National Early Warning Score or the news on your assessment station, okay? That is the only station that you will be using this. So it's for adult nursing. Like what I mentioned, for pediatrics, if, you're, if any pediatric nurses are watching this video, you will be using the pews. For midwives, you will be using the meows. Who else? Nursing associates, um, they will be doing this as part of their assessment stations. Who else? For mental health OSCE and for learning disability OSCE, they will be performing the news or the observations or the vital signs taking during their physiological observation station. So for mental health and for learning disability, Taking the vital signs is a skill. So, but for you guys, all adult nurses, you will be performing the news as part of the assessment station. So, let me just give you an update. So, probably I know a lot of people are asking me, so, MR, is it news or news 2? Okay, so what is correct? Okay, so both are correct. It's called news 2 because it's the second version of the National Early Warning Score. So, what, what changed? Okay, so remember what I've said earlier, the news was launched back in 2012. It was updated. December 2017. So there are three key elements that change. Number one is the new confusion. Yeah. So on the news on the scoring system now we have the new confusion. They 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 recognize that if there are any signs of new confusion with your patient, that is a powerful um, parameter to check whether the patient is deteriorating. Powerful sign of clinical deterioration. But remember, on your OSCE, of course, you have your dementia scenario, you cannot score that, yeah? Because we expect the patient with dementia, we expect that as one of the signs and symptoms, okay? So another one is the presence of the SPO2 scale number two, okay? That's why you might be thinking, why are there two scales on your news chart, yeah? SPO2 skill number one and SPO2 skill number two. So the reason for that is um, to improve the safety of prescribing oxygen. Because remember, we have patients with type 2 respiratory failure and patients with COPD. And I don't know if you've seen the new chart. I don't know if you can see it clear on the screen. It says here, only use scale number two under the direction of a qualified clinician okay so remember we have patients where and they have sp specific needs in terms of oxygen they have special needs in terms of oxygen they've added that to make oxygen prescribing safer okay? and last but not the least is the threshold of five if you have this chart in front of you at the back of it the orange colored section it says sir five and above it should be urgent response they've added that because 
when the patient scored five, we need to think about sepsis, okay? And if you think about sepsis, you need to act urgently. That's why on number five, threshold number five, it's an urgent response, okay? So the, those are the three added features on your news chart. That's why it's not. It's now called the National Early Warning Score 2. It's the second version. We'll now discuss the scoring system. So this chart, the one in front of you, is not present on the day of the examination. It's just a summary of the scoring system, okay? So as you can see, zero, it's the white scoring system, okay? Yellow, one, orange is two, and three. As you can see, not all parameters, um, they have a complete scoring system. Not all have one or three, okay? So we'll talk about it individually. So let's start with respiration. As you can see, the patient will score zero if the patient's respiratory rate is between 12 to 20. Would you agree that that is the normal respiration? So the patient will score one if the respiratory rate is 9 to 11. They will score two if their respiratory rate is 21 to 24, okay? And they will score three if the respiratory rate is equal or less than eight or equal or more than 25. If you think about it, eight and 25 are extremes. If you think about it, if the patient is the patient has a respiratory rate of eight, is that concerning? Definitely that is concerning, okay? Can you imagine eight? That is very um, slow. SpO2 scale number one, okay? What is the normal saturation levels? Do you agree it's 96 and above? Is that correct? So the normal value for saturation is 96 and above. Okay, so please do remember that. And the patient will score 1 if the saturation level is 94 to 95, 2 if it's 92 to 93, and um, 91 and below or less, the patient will score 3. So on the examination, never SPO2 scale number 2 was used. Okay, no one has ever used this because although we have asthma and we have pneumonia as your scenarios, we don't have COPD as a scenario on the examination as of yet. Yeah, so if you're watching this in the future, I may I might be wrong. Okay, but we're recording it in June 2023, so at the moment we don't have any scenarios for COPD. So we don't expect that you're gonna use you're gonna use this scale number two. Okay, I will not discuss it so you won't get confused. Yeah. So we'll again you will not be using SPO2 scale on your examination. Okay, so just leave it blank. Number next is your air or oxygen. So for air, remember what I've said earlier, not all parameters um they have complete scoring system. So for air or oxygen, there are only two scoring in here. It's either zero or two. So that means on the examination, if the patient is on oxygen, it's automatic. The patient will score two, regardless of the um, oxygen delivery or the device being used. Okay, so please remember that. Next is systolic blood pressure. Okay, systolic blood pressure. It says here we are only scoring the systolic. But why are people failing this one, this examination? Because although we're only scoring systolic you need to document both systolic and diastolic. So one, the patient's systolic is 101 to 110. Two, the patient's systolic is 91 to 100. And of course, three, if the patient's systolic blood pressure is less than or equal to 90. And another one is if the patient's systolic is 100 to or equal, more than or equal to 220. Pulse, 51 to 90, is that the normal pulse um, rate? 60 to 100 is our normal, but for the news, the patient will score zero if it's 51 to 90. One, if it's 41 to 50. Another one, if the patient pulse is 91 to 100. Next is consciousness. Okay, so on the examination, there are Couple scenario, couple of scenarios wherein you might experience this. So of course, number one would be um, the scenario about Glasgow Coma Scale, your neurological observation. The patient who had subdural hematoma. The patient might demonstrate um, 
con con confusion. But again, on that scenario, you will be using the GCS, yeah? On that scenario, you will be using the GCS. Another scenario that you might see confusion is your, of course, your Alzheimer's um, scenario, your dementia scenario. Of course, like what I mentioned earlier, we, we expect that as one of the signs and symptoms of dementia or Alzheimer's. But again, it's not a new onset. And um, temperature, yeah, you will be taking just the um, forehead temperature, um, the infrared one. So in here, it says here the normal, uh, the patient will score zero if it's 36.1 to 38.0. The patient score will score one if it's 35.1 to 36.0. The patient will score one if it's 38.1 to 39. And the patient will score three if it's less than 35. Hypothermia, of course. And of course, 39.1 hyperthermia. So that is the scoring system for our news. Let me ask you guys, what is the highest possible score on the news based on this? Let, let's count. Shall we count? Let's count. Okay. So for the respiration, the highest score would be three. Okay. Try to calculate it. So three. Of course, for the oxygen, you will only select one. Of course, you cannot complete scale one and scale number two at the same time. Okay, you will only select one. So, respiration three plus three, it's six. Next, air or oxygen, the highest score is two. So, three plus three is six, seven, eight. Plus the blood, blood, blood pressure, 11. Plus the pulse, 14. Consciousness, 17. Temperature, 18, 19, 20. There you go. So that will be our highest possible score on the news, okay? So again, respiration, 3. SpO2 scale number 1 or SpO2 scale number 2, 3. Again, you will only select 1. Air or oxygen, 2 is the highest possible score. Blood pressure, 3. Pulse, 3. Consciousness level, 3. And temperature is 3. Okay, is that 20? Am I correct? Make sure to, to calculate it properly, yeah? So the higher the score, the deteriorating. The lower the score, the patient is okay. So during COVID, what happened? Um, the assessor typically just give a cue card, okay? A card containing the patient's vital signs, okay? That's why one of our video, old video for the assessment, they are talking to a mannequin. And at the end of that, um, the assessor would normally give them cue cards and the cue cards contains the vital signs. But um, after COVID, we are now doing it with an actual patient or actor on the day of the examination. Okay, so you will be doing it in an actual person. So you will be taking um, actual vital signs. All right, so that's our scoring system. I hope you enjoyed our session for the scoring system. Okay, we will now discuss our escalation or the clinical response. This is the usual question I get for, for the news. So number one is, Emmer, do we need to memorize the clinical response? No, because on the day of the examination, this, the one on your screen, you have it with you on the day, okay? It's printed just at the back of the news chart, okay? So what you have on the day in terms of news is the news chart and at the back is the clinical response, okay? So the scoring system. So that means no need to memorize this. You can just simply read this on the day of the examination. But, but, but of course, as you practice, you get to learn or to remember whatever is written for each category, okay? So as you can see here, we have one, two, three, four, five categories, yeah? Zero, the low risk, or the, if the patient scored one to four. Low to medium risk, if the patient scored in three in a single parameter. Medium risk, if the patient's aggregate score is five to six. And high risk is if the patient's aggregate score is seven and above, okay? Which is translated on that table on your right, on the right-hand side of the screen. So for zero, Minimum of 12 hourly it means um, the minimum of you doing the vital science is at least every 12 hours. So if on the examination, if you want to do it like every 11 hours, that is correct. If you want to do it every 10 hours, every 9 hours, 8 hours, or every hourly, that is correct. Because based on the new scoring system, at least do it twice a day. But if you want to make it more frequent, based on the interpretation of zero, that is also correct. So going back to my example earlier, 
if the patient's systolic is 200, okay, and the aggregate score of the patient is zero, you mentioned earlier that you would check the patient hourly or every 30 minutes. Would you consider that correct on the examination? Or will you do that in real practice? If the patient's systolic is 200 and you want to check the patient's um, blood pressure every 30 minutes or one hour, would you consider that as correct? Of course, the answer is yes, yeah? Definitely, because can you imagine? Let's say me, my systolic, my blood pressure is 200 over 150. At any moment, I might experience stroke. Although my score is zero, of course, remember, you have to use your clinical judgment. And if we interpret zero, minimum of 12 hours. That means at least twice a day. But if you want to make it more frequent, that is correct. I hope you are all following. It means 12 is the minimum, but you can make it more frequent. Yeah, I hope you are all following. For the same. Let's say the vital signs are all normal. Yeah, it's all zero. Let's say the blood pressure is 130 over 80. If zero on the examination, minimum of 12 hourly, and you will tell the actor, I will be monitoring your, um, see, it says here, I will be monitoring your blood pressure every 12 hours, and I will just continue routine monitoring. That is correct on the examination. Of course, there are exceptions. Yeah, there are exceptions, such as my example, my previous example. So you can never go wrong with just following the clinical response on the examination. Again, if you're unsure, just follow whatever is written on your news protocol. Well, so one to four, minimum of four to six hours. So you will inform the registered nurse who must assess the patient. Remember, nurses, you are the nurse in the scenario. yeah. So, so it's you who will then decide whether to increase um, the frequency of monitoring. So that means if the patient scored one to four, remember minimum of four to six hours, MR, can, can I make it every three hours, two hours, or hourly? Of course, because it's written in there. Registered nurse must decide whether increased frequency of monitoring and or escalation is required, okay? Are we all following? So that means if on the examination, the patient scored one, and you, do you want to really check the patient as soon as possible? If you want to say three, two, or one, or I'll correct, because we are being backed up by this statement. Registered nurse must decide whether increased frequency is required, and you are the nurse in this scenario. Is that clear? Yeah? 